Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com and you can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. And in this particular tutorial, I want to talk to you about how the Git submodule update works. And for that matter, I want to show you a little bit about how a parent module links to a particular commit in a submodule. As you can see, I've got two repositories here that I work on with this example. I've got the Surface and the Submarine. Surface is the top level project, the submarine is the submodule. And if I take a look at Surface, you'll notice I've got a bunch of Surface attack vehicles there. I got my destroyer, my frigate, and my tug. And I've got a reference to the submarine submodule 35DA3BP0 that'll come in handy a little bit later. And you'll see in this submarine submodule, it's got one, two, three HTML files and a README, so a nuclear sub, a Russian sub, and a Chinese sub there. What I'd like to do is just demonstrate, well, how you do git submodule updates and what the implication is of these different commit IDs and these different files. So now in order to work through this example, the first thing I need to do is just clone that surface repository and I'm gonna open up a git bash shell, throw in the appropriate command, recurse submodules, that stops me from having to do the init and update after I do the initial clone. And if I dig through here, you'll notice that I've got the submarine submodule, I've got the surface top level module, and I've got one, two, three HTML files in there. That's exactly what you would expect if you took a look at the surface project. There's one, two, three HTML files right there. And in the submarine project, we've got one, two, three HTML files in a README. So when we go into the submarine module, we should have three HTML files in a README, and we don't. So, what's going on here? Well, if you notice that commit ID of the surface module, in the surface module here, we've got submarine and as a submodule, and the last time this surface project had a commit, it was pointing at commit ID 35D of the submarine project. Now if I click on that commit ID of the submarine project, you notice it's only got one file in there, that nuclear file. It doesn't have the other ones. If I go and take a look at the master repository with this particular commit here for E, it's got the three HTML files. But that's not the one that's associated with the surface project that I cloned. So how do I get these files in here? Well, let me see, there's my project. I got a CD into the actual directory. We can see my files here and there's submarine. Now I want those files. Now, what some people think you do is you think you do just an update. So let's take a look at that submarine folder there. I'm gonna do, and as I said, this isn't gonna work, but I'll do git submodule update. And it's gonna think for a little while. So it's doing something, uh, but nothing gets updated here. So that's just gonna pull in your remote references and information about various different commits, but it's not gonna merge anything. We wanna actually not only do this, but merge it to master and bring in those three files. So what you actually wanna do is you wanna have the double dash remote flag on here. So git submodule update double dash remote. And now, this is not only going to update the various references for this submodule, but it's also going to pull those different files onto my master branch. So watch this. It's thinking about it. It's pulling things in. And all of a sudden we've got one, two, three HTML files in that directory. And so that's the key. Um, if you want to actually update those files, then you know you have to do that git update remote. Um, you know, and there's other options too. You can always just go into these individual modules and when you're in those individual modules, you can just do a, a git fetch and a git merge or even a git pull. That's fine as well. Um, but uh, you know, otherwise, if you want to do it from that parent level, it's git submodule update and double dash remote. Now, of course, we don't want to run into that problem again where we don't have those updated files. So let's go into that surface project. Do a git add, always a good idea. A git commit dash m add remote update and git push origin. That should push everything up to GitLab. And now if I go over to GitLab, 
take a look at the original repository, do a refresh, you'll notice now that the submarine is no longer pointing to the commit ID that was 35 and change. Now it's 4E848, and that is the commit that has all the files that I want. And there you go, that's sort of the basics of the git submodule remote update. Now if you want to learn more about submodules, you want to learn more about Git, you want to learn more about GitLab, GitHub, or anything that has to do with server-side software development, head over to the server side. And if you want to keep it, keep up to date with what I'm up to, you can follow me on Twitter, at CameronMCNZ.